Namaste. So, the next few verses in Sri Panchadashi describe the character of the authentic Vedantin, the authentic Advaitin, the self-realized being, Jivan Mukta. How? By describing the state of Samadhi. So, this state is the characteristic of a realized being. So how does it look? How can we recognize a person like that? Arjuna asks Krishna this question in the Bhagavad Gita. He asks Krishna, how does such a man of knowledge look? How does he stand? How does he sit? How does he walk? And how does he speak? And Krishna, when he answers, he turns the whole question around and he tells Arjuna, when one's mind is not at all affected by the changes in the material energy, then he is considered a man of knowledge, a man of wisdom, a self-realized being. In other words, he doesn't talk about the external symptoms at all because Self-realization really is not a matter of externals. But there is one qualifying factor, and that is the mode of goodness. You will not see a self-realized being acting in the mode of passion or ignorance. So let's just take a look at, you know, the different presenters here on YouTube. Huh? If you go and do a search for Advaita, you'll get a whole barrage of different people talking about Advaita. And you'll see, first of all, some of them are representing big organizations with many, many temples, and thousands, if not millions of followers all over the world. Well, you can discount those right away. Because to become an important person in a big organization means basically a passionate, competitive personality who has won after defeating so many of his other disciples. He's given this big position and a big title. And then he can get on YouTube and represent the organization. Others aren't permitted. They can't speak out. Only one who has the organization's interest at heart. Not your interest. Not even the interest of the Vedas or Advaita or Shankaracharya. Huh? But their own interest because... It took a tremendous investment of time and effort to reach the position where they can speak for a big organization. So these are passionate people. These are attached people. These are people who are identified with an abstraction, a group, a name, a title, a designation. They are not in samadhi. <laughs> Then there's the people who say, oh, just read a little bit about Advaita. It's really simple. Once you realize that you are Brahman, you are God, that's it. You don't have to do anything. Uh, just understand it, that aham brahmasmi, uh, I am Brahman, and that's the end of it. Well, this is called Neo-Advaita. It's Neo because it's new. And it's new because it's not based on anything. <laughs> not based on any tradition, not based on any practices, not based on any real deep knowledge of Advaita. So you can also bypass these people. They're not going to give you anything valuable. In fact, they're just going to mislead you by giving you a so-called shortcut to enlightenment, 
which actually doesn't exist. There are no shortcuts. There is no easy path. Why? Because to attain samadhi, you have to give up all attachments in the modes of passion and ignorance. And the more you maintain these, the longer your samadhi is going to be blocked. See, samadhi is not something you can do. It's something that just comes after a long period of cultivation. And it leaves one in a state of pure goodness. That is, there's no passionate striving after different goals and different attachments, identifications, possessions, and so on. None of that. They aren't attractive anymore. And there's no indulgence in intoxication and illicit sex and meat eating and gambling and all those other things characterized by the mode of ignorance. All there is is a great relief and a great comfort, a great happiness. Although it's not happiness in the usual sense of enjoying an object. Rather, it's happiness in being one's real self. So this is the state of the Jivan Mukta. You're not going to see them running a big promotion with, you know, multiple YouTube channels and a big Patreon site with numerous, you know, ad campaigns on TikTok and whatnot. And you're not going to see them offering subscriptions and special deals, you know, or uh, confidential uh, sessions and stuff like this for money. That is not the style of someone who's in samadhi. Someone who's in samadhi is not active. They're calm peaceful, satisfied. They don't need anything. They're not running after anything. Nor are they running away. That's passion and ignorance. But goodness simply is what it is. It's impossible to explain because it's the absence of that which we normally consider the type of personality that acts as a teacher. They don't hold classes. They don't sell workshops. They don't publish books. Huh? Maybe a little video every couple of days, you know. But it's not like they're going to make a big effort because there is no more effort. From their point of view, they've accomplished all that there is to accomplish in this life. What more is there? So they simply abide in their goodness and relish their satisfaction on having completed the purpose of this life, the purpose of this entire universe, which is complete self-realization. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.